Well, all communication is a form of sales in some respect. You're selling what's important to you in terms of what's important to them. If you help them get what they want to get in life, they tend to want to give you what you want in life. And the topic today is going to be the mastering the art of communication. <clears throat> now, what I share right now will be applicable not only in intimate relationships with a partner, children, employees, customers, social contacts, friends, vendors. <clears throat> the principle that I'm about to apply applies in any form of relationship whatsoever. And I'm gonna be talking about the art of communicating and mastering it and sharing with you something practical you can do that can enhance that. A lot of relationships break down because of communication issues. And this is something that uh, I'm sure you've all, uh, everybody here has listened and experienced in some form or fashion to this. So if you got something to write with and write on, you might wanna take some notes or maybe record and listen to this. Every human being, regardless of age, spectrum of gender, culture, lives moment by moment by a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most to least important in their life. So each individual has a unique set of priorities. And it's the, this set is fingerprint specific, retinal pattern specific, snowflake specific. Nobody has exactly the same set of values. <clears throat> Whatever this set of values is, you filter through your senses, your reality. You make decisions according to it, whatever you gives you the most advantage or disadvantage according to them. And you take actions and make decisions to act according to these values. So the hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny, but also dictates who you are. In fact, the very highest value that an individual uh, revolves around, their identity revolves around it. So in my case, one of my highest values is teaching. <clears throat> and so if you ask me, who are you? Ontologically, I would say, well, I'm a teacher because that's what I spend most of my life doing. If you had a woman who is raising beautiful children and you asked her the same question, even though she may be a teacher at school, but if her highest value is her family, she'll say, I'm a mother. <clears throat> so your ontological identity revolves around what you value most. So tell me what you value most, tell me what's highest on your values and I'll tell you your identity. Now, every human being wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are and for both sides of who they are. Because if somebody supports those values, highest values, you tend to open up to them. If they challenge those highest values, you tend to close down on them. So you can be nice, mean, kind, cruel, supportive back or challenging back. And you can be, in a sense, playing out different personas or mass, but both of them revolve around what you value most. And whatever is what's highest on your value, you're spontaneously inspired from within to do it. So this is where you excel. This is where you, are, you shine. This is where you expand. This is where you achieve. Now, everybody wants to be loved and appreciate who they are. Who they are revolves around what their highest value is. <clears throat> and when you're in a relationship, whatever the relationship is, you want to be respected for that. You want to be loved for that. You want to be appreciated for that. If I ask people, and I've asked millions of people in seminars around the world, how many of you want to be loved and appreciated for who you are? Everybody puts their hand up. <clears throat> and that includes both sides. The part that's, when they're supported, it's nice. And the part that's challenged gets mean. Both sides, they want to be loved for all of it. You want somebody who loves you for that. You want somebody that understands that. <clears throat> and you want to have sustainable exchange with people. Now, what does that mean? If somebody supports you, you tend to build yourself up. If somebody challenges you, you tend to put yourself down sometimes. And so what happens is you have these personas that oscillate around the real you. When you're proud, you tend to be narcissistic and want others to live in your values and give you things, you might say, and get something for nothing. 
And when you're maybe ashamed and minimizing yourself, you can sometimes sacrifice for others, almost altruistically giving something for nothing. I'm, think about this. When you've been infatuated with somebody, you tend to, because you don't want to lose them, your fear of loss of them make you sacrifice what's important to you to try to fit into what's with them. And eventually that doesn't work and you resent that. You want to you say, I want my life back. So you, if you exaggerate somebody and minimize yourself, that's not you and it's not them, the exaggerated self. And if you minimize them, you're trying to get them to live in your values and you exaggerate yourself. And whenever you exaggerate or minimize yourself, you're not being your real self. So nature tends to, in order to be loved for who you are, tends to give feedback. If you get cocky, you get criticism to be brought down, pride before the fall. And if you get humble, you get lifted up to try to get you back into authenticity where you're loved and appreciated for who you are. And until you are authentic, you can't really expect to be loved and appreciated for who you are. <clears throat> so in relationships, you got two people with completely unique set of values, fingerprint specific, trying to communicate. And you can have a full spectrum because the world is a full spectrum out there with values. You have uh, people with different sites of values in the sense that they may have their highest value may be intellectual pursuits. Uh, another person may be business pursuits. Another might have wealth building pursuits. Otherwise, family rearing pursuits, social, social political or influence pursuits, or possible leadership roles, physical health and well-being, yogis or nutritionists or something, or health professionals, or you might have some spiritual quest. Everybody's got a different highest value and identity that they tend to pursue and live by. So even the very highest value is also teleological in a sense. It's the thing that they feel is most meaningful and purposeful in their life and that they spontaneously love doing. And when they do something, they love spontaneously doing it. And if they can be around somebody that can honor that, they feel comfortable being around that person. And that helps the dynamic, the relationship. <clears throat> now, if you have a full spectrum of people out there, there's going to be some people that are more similar to you and more people, and some people that are different from you in as far as values. Some that are easier to get along with, called friends. Some that are difficult, called enemies. But they've been, it's been found that maximum growth and development of all human beings is a balance of support and challenge. If you get highly supported and put up, you can become, in a sense, juvenilely dependent on that person. And if they challenge you, you become precocious independent. So nature is always trying to bring those into, into balance between the supporters and challenge in life to keep you authentic. But now let's say you have a relationship with somebody. They have a different set of values. How do you relate to them if it's completely different, particularly if it's widely different? You know, and you have more similarities and differences, you're infatuated with people. When you have more differences and similarities, you have resentment to people commonly. When you see a balance of similarities and differences, you have love for somebody. That's why you get maximum growth right at that point. So here's a question. <clears throat> if one person has one set of values, and their highest values are who they identify by. And there's another one with a different set of values, completely different. How do they relate to each other? If one's a business leader and one's a manager or an executive, or one's an executive, one's a manager, one's a manager, one's a supervisor, a supervisor and a salesperson, or a salesperson and a customer, or a parent and a child, or a parent and a spouse, or a sister or a brother or a friend. Whatever it is, their values are going to be different. No two people are exactly the same. If they were, one's not necessary. So there's a very interesting question that you want to ask since people want to be loved for who they are and it's their highest value. And I hope you write this down. It's a gold mine. It's so simple, but it means a lot. You ask this question. So write this down. Make sure you get this. How specifically is the top three highest values? in this individual, the thing that's most meaningful, most inspiring, most important to them, how is it helping me fulfill my top three highest values? What's most important, meaningful, and inspiring to me? Now, if you can't answer that, and you can't see what they're dedicated to is serving you, you're going to be, when you're around them, challenged, you're gonna get puffed up, you're gonna talk down to them, and you're gonna have a monologue talking down trying to change them and project your values onto them and try to get them to change. Everyone here has had people around them trying to project their values onto them. You should do this. You ought to do this. You're supposed to do this. You got to do this. You have to do this. You need to do this. You must do this. And 
there's a party that resists that because you want to be loved for who you are. And I don't want to have to live under other people's imperative projections. So if you don't see how what they're dedicated to is serving you, you have a tendency to be proud of your own values because everybody thinks their values are correct. <clears throat> and you tend to project your values onto them. And then what's happening is instead of having a dialogue, you'll have a monologue. You'll be speaking down to them or trying to change them, which pushes people away. People aren't interested in that. They want to be loved for who they are. They don't want to be told how they should be. And so if you can't see what they're dedicated to serving you, you're going to want to change them so you can get what you want because there's a tendency to want to surround yourself with people that support your values and avoid people that challenge it. Now, that's not the wisest way to grow. You need both challengers and supporters, but that's the natural amygdala tendency, the subcortical tendency, our animal nature to avoid predator and seek prey. So we tend to have a desire to be proud and be right and to avoid challengers. But actually what that does is makes us talk down to people and have a monologue where they're listening and we're speaking, which turns people away. And now what happens is when that occurs, that makes challenges them. They get kind of belligerent. They get self-righteous. They get their amygdala activated because when you challenge them, their amygdala comes online. And then what happens is they then do the thing back. And they project back because they can't see how what you're dedicated to is serving their highest values. So then they talk down and now you have another monologue going back and you're not listening while they're speaking and they're not listening when you're speaking. You have what is called an alternating monologue. So nobody really hears what anybody's saying. And you hear people in arguments like that. Well, you're not listening to what I'm saying. <clears throat> Listen to me. Look at me. Look in my eyes. You know, but when you actually can see how specifically what their highest values are and how, first know what they are and then see how they serve you and how they help you fulfill what's most important to you. You're grateful for them. You appreciate them. You feel love for them. You see that they're actually assisting you in fulfilling your life. That doesn't mean that they have to have similar values. It just means that whatever they have as values, you can see how it helps you fulfill yours. So I'm going to say the question again, how specifically are the top three values of this individual, or even the top value, most important value, how is what they're dedicated to, what's most meaningful and inspiring and fulfilling to their life, how does it help me fulfill mine? Now, if you answer that, I don't mean one time, not two times, not five, not even 10 times, but 30 to 50 times. The more you do, the more your brain neuroplastically literally moderates its myelinization in the brain, which is the myelin sheath that helps nerve conduction. And neuroplastically changes the brain in such a way where when you see them, instead of avoiding them or trying to change them or fix them, you listen and respect them. Respect is a perfect balance of praise and reprimand. That's what the, the, where you see both sides. Remember, if you infatuate somebody, you see similars. If you resent somebody, you see differences. When you see a similars and differences, support and challenge equally, you maximally grow. And we're designed to maximally grow in what our highest value is. So we can see that and ask the questions and help us see that we appreciate and love this individual and maximally grow. Now, as you answer this question 30, 40, 50 times, I sometimes do 80 for some couples. The more you do, the more you appreciate them for who they are. And when you love people and appreciate them for who they are, they turn into who you love. It's really amazing watching it. I've been doing it in my the Breakthrough Experience program, which I've been teaching for 32, 33, almost 33 years. Next month will be 33 years. <clears throat> I've been watching it when somebody loves somebody for who they are. There's a shift that goes on and they actually are receiving back love. That's, they just, that's what they want. Now, you also don't want to stop at the idea that you now can see how what they're dedicated to serves you. But in order for you to communicate in their values where they feel value out of you, you want to ask the next question. How specifically is what I'm dedicated to, my high highest top three values, what my is most fulfilling and meaningful to me, inspires me, how does it help them fulfill theirs? Now, if you can't answer that, you won't be able to articulate what's important to you in terms of what's important to them, where they're going to listen. And then you're going to end up getting belligerent and righteous and trying to change them again. You know, if you imagine if you were to go out and sale and a customer get sales, <clears throat> you would have to communicate in their buying motive, what, the, what their needs are. If you don't know what it is, it's hard to sell them. Well, all communication is a form of sales. And in some respect, you're selling what's important to you in terms of what's important to them. 
if you help them get what they want to get in life, they tend to want to give you what you want in life. And that's the how that escalates. And what it does is that when you can see how what they're doing is serving you and what you're doing is serving them, and you've really expanded your awareness of doing it, you create a dialogue. And a dialogue is where you're having both people communicating what's meaningful to the individual in a meaningful way. And that's not, it's, it's like an exercise you can train. It's not something, what we do is we, we go to a sales training in order to get sales, to get our income, but we don't go to relationship training sometimes and learn how to communicate in people's values, even though it's the same thing. But taking the time to find out what they're dedicated to is serving you and what you're dedicated to is serving them is extremely invaluable. So I'm just going to emphasize it again and go through the question again, in case you didn't get it down fast enough. How specifically is the top first, second, or third highest values in this individual, the thing that's most meaningful, inspiring, and important to them, most fulfilling to them? How is what they're dedicated to? What do they spontaneously do without having to be motivated? What do they spontaneously do? Because that tells you what they value. I spontaneously teach. I teach every single day. I'm researching, writing, or teaching every day. So my top three are that. So you take the top three, you look at what they spontaneously love doing and they just do, their life revolves around it, their identity revolves around it, their purpose revolves around it. That's what they want to be loved for and appreciated for. How specifically is what that is helping you fulfill what yours is? And don't stop that and don't say, I don't know, it's not. That's the problem. We have two different things in common. It doesn't matter what their values are. There's no two value structures between two people that can't be linked. And I've had people of extreme opposites that want to kill each other almost. They didn't have the, they literally in the middle of a divorce and we do this exercise and all of a sudden they're just, they calm down and all of a sudden they're relating to each other and they're starting to dialogue. I've dem demonstrated this in my values training program when I do to consultants and coaches and it's a gold mine. And almost everybody that learns how to do that, they go, there's an instant value that you can offer clients and, and instantly assist people in a relationship because relationships are huge as far as the dynamics, business-wise, financial-wise, relationship-wise, health-wise, everything. Because if you're not communicating, you're, you're distressed. And that's that takes its toll on your health-wise. And you're not inspired when you're not able to communicate. And you want to be loved for who you are, as, you said, as I said. So, <clears throat> But by asking that question and doing that, the respect level goes up because you're now able to see that no matter what it is, whether it's supportive or challenging, they both serve. And when you can see what they're dedicated to is serving you, you have a dialogue. And a dialogue is through the tongue and through the ability to see that you have what I call intimate relationship. Intimate relationship is when you're not looking down on somebody, you're not too proud to admit what you see in them is inside you. And you're not looking up to somebody, you're too humble to admit what you see in them is inside you. You're looking across them and you're realizing that what you see in them is inside you. You have something of equal value and you're communicating that value in terms of what they value. Now there's another little exercise. So that's the first one. How specifically is what they're dedicated to helping you fulfill what you're dedicated to? And what I, what, now how do you determine that? I'm just gonna uh, share this. Go to my website, drdmartini.com. Go to determine your values, find it on the, my website <clears throat> and go through a 30 minute little presentation, a little questionnaire that you go through and answer 13 questions. It'll take you 30 minutes. It'll be private. Uh, it'll be free. Doesn't cost you anything. And you can store it there. No one will see it except you. And you can come back and do it again because the first time you do it, you might lie to yourself and not want to admit what you really, your life, life is demonstrating it's important to you. Because most people don't really be honest. They're not honest with themselves at first time, but do it again until you can really look at what your life is really demonstrating that's important to you. So you know to expect from yourself what you're going to do. Anytime you try to expect yourself to do something low on your values, you're automatically let yourself down. Anytime you expect somebody else to live in your values or live in lower values on their hierarchy, you're going to feel betrayed. They're not going to live in your values. And anytime you project your values on when people, when somebody says, well, so-and-so betrayed me. No, they didn't betray you. They're living according to their values. You weren't aware of what they were and you expect them to live in something other than what they actually are. And they're making decisions according to what they think will give more advantage and disadvantage at that moment. So if they did something 
That means that something came along that's offering more in their value system than what you're offering, and they moved and did something different. That's not betrayal. It's labeled that way out of people who don't understand values, but it's just human beings trying to fulfill their lives. And you're doing the same. And if you stop and reflect and see where you've done those same things in your life, you'll see easily that you've done the same without maybe wanting to admit it. So go in there and do the value determination. Know what the top three are. And when you meet somebody you want to have a relationship with, a spouse, kids, whatever, you might want to suggest to them to do the same. Because and you, you don't say, hey, Joe, you need to go do this exercise. No. You say, Joe or Mary or whatever their name is, I feel that you're an important person in my life. And sometimes I don't listen to you well, and I don't feel like I'm communicating effectively or respectfully. And I've been learning something more recently on how to more effectively communicate with respect. And if I knew what was really, really important to you, and I didn't project assumptions, and I didn't throw my shoulds and supposed tos and have tos onto you, um, I feel I could more appreciate you and respect and communicate effectively. Is there any way I could have you go through a little process It would take a bit of time so we can look at what's really important to you so I can then find out how it serves me and I can communicate it more effectively? I don't find people having resistance if you make it a win for them. So if you go and have them and yourself do that on people that are really important, just you in your circle of people that you most interact with, take the time to do that or indirectly do it by looking at what the questions are in their life and look at what their life is demonstrating. So it gives you at least a good indication of it. You're going to have a higher probability of communicating with dialogue, not alternating monologues. But if you do that and you make the links, the more links you make, the higher the respect. I did an exercise in Tokyo to a group of about 60 or 70 consultants and facilitative uh, <clears throat> coaches. And we had two people who'd never met each other determine their values and sit down and do this exercise for about two hours. They literally asked how specifically is this top value helping me fulfill this one. And they took the top value from each of them and they did 30 links and 30 links. They took the first one and the second one, 30 links, 30 links. This first one and this second one, 30 links, 30 links. Then they took the second one and the second one and they made links. And they spent two hours making links as far as they could get down to the top three. When they were through, the rapport, the communication, the respect level, the interest in knowing each other was skyrocketed. In fact, out of 66, exactly, I remember the name, 66 uh, people in the room, 33 pairs, when they were doing this process, out of the 33 pairs, 27 of those pairs started doing business with each other. They had never met each other, they were doing business transactions when they got through. That's what it does. Because if you can see how what they're dedicated to is serving what you're dedicated and vice versa, you have a dialogue and you feel respected and you feel appreciated and you feel loved and people want to do business with somebody. And the oxytocin and the trust and vasopressin and the hormones and encephalons and endorphins, these compounds go up in the brain and you feel that you can trust them. But realize trust is not what people do. You can only trust somebody to live according to their top values. And when you know them and see how they serve you, you allow them to do that. And therefore, they be perceived as trustworthy because you're not expecting them to live outside what their values are. You're not setting yourself up for betrayal. So it's a huge difference in the art of communication. Now, one last thing before I close on this. I developed a methodology that I teach in the Break to Experience called the Demartini Method. And this is a goldmine of helping people respect and appreciate each other in addition to this exercise. And that is to ask what specific trait, action, or inaction do you perceive this individual displaying or demonstrating that you admire most or despise most? So if you admire them and put them on a pedestal, you'll minimize yourself to them. If you despise them, you'll tend to be too proud to admit it and exaggerate yourself with them. And both of those make it difficult to have fair communication. But if you go in and identify what those traits are that you admire and despise, and then you go look within yourself and identify uh, where and when you display or demonstrate those same behaviors in your own way, in your own value systems. And I've done this on hundreds of thousands of people. Believe it or not, you will find if you look where you're doing the same behavior. In fact, you don't admire people or despise people unless they remind you of some part of you 
that you're too humble or too proud to admit, but you have. When you go and identify where it is and you level the playing field and realize, oh my God, I, they're not doing anything I don't do. It calms down the judgment and increases the dialogue. If you go even one step further and ask on the things that you disliked about them or despised about them, what are the benefits to you? And ask, how did it serve you? How did their behavior serve you? And the ones that you admire, how is it a disservice to you? And level those back out, you'll increase the probability of sustainable, fair exchange. Because when you're puffed up, you tend to want to get something for nothing. When you're beat down, you tend to give something for nothing. When you're equal, you tend to exchange something for something, a sustainable, fair exchange. Every relationship is striving for androgyny and sustainable, fair exchange. Androgyny means to put the estrogen and the testosterone in a balance. Uh, if you get too soft or too harsh, nature tends to bring you back into equilibrium. And so if you do the Demartini method, which is the questions that help you neutralize the emotional baggage so you can respect them that way and do the value linking, you just changed the dynamic of relationship communication. The art of communication is enhanced by those two mechanisms. And I encourage you, please go online, go to my website and do the value determination process. Then practice the value uh, linking process. In my book, The Values Factor, I have that in a whole chapter. And some of this, what I'm sharing today is in that book, The Values Factor. And if there's any way of making it to the breakthrough experience, the breakthrough experience is where I actually have you do it. Have you do the method. I take people that you've resented or admired or whatever, and we level the playing field and have you in tears of gratitude and appreciation for somebody you never would imagine even talk to again and show you how to do it. And you watch the moment you have those balanced, the dialogue and communication is, is from the heart. And that is extremely powerful in transforming your life. If you help other people get what they want to get in life, they help you get what you want to get in life. We don't want to be altruistic or narcissistic. We want to be a balance of both to have sustainable fair exchange and have equity between ourselves and others and equanimity within ourselves. Now, in addition to what I've just shared today, I also want to show, talk about it because it, because balance, when you're infatuated or resentful, you don't have a balanced emotional state. So I have a, a free on-demand masterclass and I want you to make sure I want to make sure I uh, state this properly. Uh, I want to make sure that you go to this free on-demand masterclass, balance your emotions for greater achievement. Because if you can help other people get what they want to get in life, you get what you want to get in life and you both achieve more. Take advantage of this free on-demand masterclass, balance your emotions. So you're going to learn something about this exercise, the DMRT method there. If you go online and get the value determination and you get that, it will absolutely help you in your communication so you can have more dialogue, not alternate monologues. You want to be loved and appreciated for who you are. So do they. You won't appreciate them if you're trying to change them because you're not seeing how they serve you and vice versa. When you can see how you're serving them, they can see, you can see how they serve you. You have a deeply respectful dialogue that can enhance a long-term relationship. Sustainable fair exchange is what everybody is striving for. It's an equitable position to be in and allows you to open your heart. So you get to be loved and appreciated for who you are because you're loving and appreciating others the way they are. So please take advantage of this free masterclass, Balancing Your Emotions, and please go to the website. And if any way possible, get to the Breakthrough Experience. I guarantee you learning the Demartini Method will be worth its weight in cold. Anyway, thank you for joining me this uh, weekend or this week. I do them every week. And I um, hope that uh, stimulated some thinking. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until the next week, practice. Mm -hmm.